Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. Make sure you subscribe to get notified of all of the latest Tech Stuff videos every Tuesday. Today we're going to look at subwoofer components individually, what they do, and how they work together. So here we have an EMF Audio Ermagerd V2 motor. This one is a prototype. Uh, the only thing is different on this is we don't have the logos in here and the gap is a little bit different uh, from production. But other than that, it is essentially the same. This is a neodymium magnet. So on every motor, you're going to have to have a magnet. It may be ferrite, uh, might be neo. Um, there's a couple other different types as well, but they're typically not used in subwoofers. We have a north pole and a south pole. So here's the north side and here's the bottom side. And this is actually going to make a circuit that goes through the motor. And this gap right here is what we need to worry about where the motor strength actually is. The ideal scenario is have as much as possible right here and not have stray anywhere else. So you want everything focused in this gap as much as possible. So on this motor, we have a Gauss meter, so we can see exactly what it's reading. And this one in particular you see as we move it through the gap it'll go up and down. But 6600, 6700 um, I have seen peaks of 6800. I don't have a peak hold on this one. But the uh, production is uh, just a little bit smaller gap. So when you have a little bit smaller gap, that's going to give you a higher Gauss number. The Gauss number is relative only to itself in strength. It is not a measure of how the sub will perform. That has to do with other things which we'll get into. So this one is around 6700, 6800. You can have too much. This is for a musical sub. This is just the right amount for all of the other parts involved. So that's where we'll go into next. So we have the motor, we have the magnetic gap that goes all the way around. We have a basket. So the basket is also referred to as a frame, but this is going to be the structure that bolts to this motor and is going to be the mounting points for the spider and the cone. Well, it's around, uh, that's attached to the cone. So, next in part of assembly, we'll have the spider. Now this being an Ermagerd V2 18, uses a 12 inch spider. This is not common. This is something that we tooled. Um, very irregular to have it, but that's how you get the absolutely obnoxious amounts of X-Max that this has. So that will go on the basket, on the very top landing of this particular basket. Then we would have the cone that will go on top of that. So here you can kind of see how this goes together minus the coil, but the spiders are to keep the coil alignment down below. The surround is to keep the spider alignment up top while the cone moves. So this cone is going to go forward and backward, which I can't really do without it being assembled. So it's going to move up and down, and the surround and spider are there for the sole purpose of making sure that the coil stays straight up and down in the gap. The cone is your radiating surface. So when you have this moving, this is what's actually displacing the air as it moves forward and backward. The dust cap is what will end up going on top of the cone, right about here, which protects dust from getting in the gap. Because when we have this all together, this would be exposed at the top of the cone. You don't want dust getting in this end, uh, can circulate through the motor, get back in the gap, that kind of thing. So we have the dust cap, which is aptly named that because it keeps dust out. It is capping it off so you don't get dust in it. Imagine that. So for a better look at what's happening with the coil, the coil sits in the gap right here. And this is going to be moving up and down this entire time. 
So what's happening here is you have an electrical current that's going through the coil. That coil is responding to the magnetic field that's happening with the motor. If this was not magnetized, or this coil was just hanging out, you apply power to it, it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to do anything, it's just going to generate heat. Uh, it's basically what a heater is, a convection heater. Um, it's just a coil, you apply power to it, current is the uh, large factor in that, and it would generate heat. So when you take this coil and you put it inside a magnetic field, that's what makes it move. The frequency that you're playing is the frequency of the electricity, it's AC electricity. So that frequency is how many cycles per second that's going to move. So it's 50 hertz, that's 50 cycles per second. That means this will move down and back up 50 times in one second. So the correlation of the magnetic gap strength and the coil. If you have a lot of material in the coil, you have a lot of strength potential. Eventually you'll max out to where you can no longer put any more current through the coil. So when you have a strong current and wattage, which would be voltage and current, when that is very strong and then you apply that into a strong magnetic field, that's when you get a stronger motor force, or BL, is where that comes in on your tail small parameters. So if you have a weak motor but a very strong coil, it's not gonna do you any good. If you have a really, really strong motor, but you lose potential from your coil, that's also not gonna do anything for you. So from a performance standpoint, if you have too much strength, you can end up damaging the other parts. So that's going to give you a very low QTS, which is not very musical. And if you have this where the coil is too long, in the gap or anything like that, and too much motor force, what will end up happening is this coil is going to keep trying to go and it's going to have so much force, it's going to rip the spiders. So but there is a balance of the appropriate motor force for a given sub. If you want it musical, you're going to be somewhere in the 0.3 to 0.5 QTS for port enclosures, and then above that you're going to be in a sealed enclosure. Um, once you get down to the 0.1, 0.2 QTS, that's when we're talking a strictly SPL application. It's going to be very peaky, which is great for SPL, but not so great for your daily musical kind of scenarios. Um, you'd have to have a very, very small box of that, and then you might be overcoming things with frequency response as well. So that is how all of these parts work together. There isn't really a lot to it. Um, the way that you would get the power from the terminals into the leads. Uh, you might have push terminals, you might have direct leads, but those are going to be connected to the basket. Those go into the tinsel leads. These tinsel leads go onto this end, which will get soldered onto this end of the coil right here. So that's how that the path that it goes from the connection over here, through here, soldered onto here, then back down, and then through the coil. If you learned something from this video and you like our other videos, go subscribe. Check out the other Tech Stuff Tuesday videos in the series. We do these every Tuesday. Make sure you hit a thumbs up, comment below if you have any suggestions or any compliments on this video. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next Tuesday.